This day we set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our civilization and to set free a suffering humanity. Our sons, pride of our nation, lead them straight and cruel. Call of Duty's long-awaited return to its World War II roots is not only a homecoming, but also a commemoration of the powerful bonds that form between brothers in arms. Yes, connecting with strangers through online matches and the zombies mode isn't unusual, but Call of Duty World War II's moving campaign also salutes the brotherhood that grows and strengthens on the battlefield. The end result is a game that delivers practically everything that one looks for in a pick-up-and-play shooter set in the Western Front of World War II, while also breaking free of Call of Duty's formulaic trappings. A first-person shooter set during the journey from Normandy to the Rhine isn't unique, but you haven't quite experienced anything like the tour of Ronald Daniels and the 1st Infantry Division in Call of Duty World War II. It's a substantial six plus hour trek where intense close quarters combat complements spectacular showcase events brought to life through excellent visuals and sound design. We are all that separates the world from darkness. This, so much more than a chance to be heroes in our own lifetimes. If we prevail, our triumph will be etched into the hearts and minds of a grateful world for untold generations. I'm talking about glory, gentlemen. True glory. A supporting cast of well-crafted personalities greatly enhances the narrative. They directly assist you during combat based on your needs and performance. Their contributions, which include replenishing health packs and grenades, are tied to a cooldown that decreases as you kill enemies. This kill-driven method of supply replenishment is undeniably gamified, but it's nonetheless a crafty way to serve the narrative's focus on bonding with your squad. Combat is about hunkering down at nearly every fallen table, picking off just enough Nazis to give you an opening for the next cover point. And as you count on your squad for supplies and recon support, you feel empowered as a valuable team member in a company that has your back. Remember, no digging in at the shore. You've got to advance. You need to stay low and do not bunch up. Stick to your training, you're going to make it through. I'm proud to lead you fellas into battle. Anytime, anywhere. Naturally forgoing the future tech and superhuman mobility of the last few CODs, the return to mid-20th century combat is especially welcome in World War II's adversarial multiplayer. The prevalence of tight and enclosed areas make shotguns and submachine guns the popular weapons of choice in Team Deathmatch and other classic modes like the territorially driven domination or hardpoint. If you're a sniper fan, your talents shine the brightest in war, Call of Duty World War II's version of Battlefield's Rush. As a mode where one side of attackers attempt to conquer multiple segments of a map one section at a time, its multi-phase, linear format makes it a prime battleground for long-range weapons. The asymmetrical format of assaulting and defending fits the D-Day invasion perfectly as one of the three available operations. All sorties proved involving and satisfying, no matter the side, which makes the limited selection of three maps the one drawback of this otherwise stellar mode. Whatever your preferred armaments, Call of Duty World War II's new division class system excels by letting you make the most of your specific playstyle while offering the flexibility to diversify your loadouts. By joining the Expeditionary Force, for example, you have the exclusive benefit of incendiary shotgun rounds. But that doesn't mean you can't switch to an assault rifle mid-match. The more you play, the more rewards you earn that can be spent to hone your personal armory and abilities to suit your needs. Adding to your identity building are the myriad cosmetic items you unlock by opening supply crates, which are awarded regularly as you play. This blind box system plays out innocuously, with no pay-to-win shortcuts in sight, at least in the game's launch iteration. Tying these adversarial multiplayer modes together is the activity-rich social hub aptly titled Headquarters. 
This lively gathering spot is an inviting sight to chill and train in ways impossible in standard issue multiplayer menus. Between the cluttered user interface and the long checklist of available objectives, Headquarters feels overwhelming at first, but it speaks to the richness of this area's practical and entertaining activities. Headquarters even offers its share of stimulating gunplay. The marquee match is in the one versus one pit. Its single weapon stakes are socially enhanced by letting those in the queue watch current matches while they wait their turn. Pairing cooperative play with the appeal of a goal-driven narrative, Zombies once again proves its worth as an essential Call of Duty mode. The survival mode of fantastical fiction pits players against waves of the undead in a Bavarian village. Those who thrive on multitasking will find the abundance of action items and the near-relentless influx of brain-dead enemies positively engrossing. Along with naturally gaining a better familiarity of the map and the many zombie types, repeat playthroughs reward players with a host of meaningful upgrades and quality of life conveniences, from passive buffs to custom loadout slots. Compared to multiplayer, loot crates and zombies play a much larger, more practical role, adding to the mode's value as a compelling showpiece at the same level of Call of Duty World War II's other game types. Any given pack can contain a game-changing consumable, whether that's a few free revives or a couple zombie-obliterating panzer strikes. Figuring out when to use these valuable enhancements is part of the fun. I didn't sign up for that shite. None of us did. But here we are, and you have your mission just as I have mine. To find and rescue the scientist who risked his life to get us this intelligence. Klaus Fischer, my brother. I'm in antiquities, darling. Not search and rescue. Best of luck. What the hell was that? Ultimately, if every shooter set in the European theater of World War II is measured by how it depicts its D-Day landing, assuming it has such a mission, Call of Duty World War II emphatically succeeds in its impactful designs and delivery. While not equally emotional, this battle's reinterpretation in war mode proves to be a highlight in a superb suite of competitive modes. Zombies rounds off this stellar return to form, effectively blending the ferocity of online cooperative play with the goal-driven satisfaction found in the campaign. As one of the most comprehensive and filler-free Call of Duties in recent memory, Call of Duty World War II successfully capitalizes on the series' strengths and warrants the attention of any first-person shooter enthusiast. Tonight, everything we've lost, everything we fought for, will mean something. Tonight, we take back our city. 